Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we have a 50 amp 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery from Vedder. Ved Vedder. V A T R E R. So let's go ahead and open up the box and see what we got. Okay. I noticed that when I got the box there was some damage to it, so hopefully it didn't damage the battery, but we'll we'll see what it looks like. So let's open it up. It's got a big thick piece of styrofoam on top. And let's see, we have our our battery right here. And then we have a little uh, baggie with some, it looks like uh, six millimeter post bolts and, uh, and caps. And it looks like a little uh, user manual and warranty card. Looking at the battery, uh, I do like the color scheme. It's nice, it's not just a simple black battery. It's got some, some pizzazz to it, I guess you could say. Um, Right on the very front, it does say that it's a lithium iron phosphate battery, 12.8 uh, volts nominal, 50 amp hour capacity. Uh, it gives you some cautions about how to use it and do not disassemble, crush, puncture, or incinerate the battery. Do not short circuit, all the good stuff. All the other sides are completely blank. And then the top gives you the uh, specifications of the battery. So it's the model LM. 1250. Um, the type is lithium iron phosphate or a uh, LiPo 4 battery. Uh, energy is 12.8 volts nominal, 50 amp hours, so that gives you a power rating of 640 watt hours. Charge voltage is between 14.2 and 14.6 volts. That is typical for a lithium iron phosphate battery. Maximum charge current is 50 amps. Maximum discharge current is 50 amps. So we'll be uh, doing a little bit with that in a bit. Uh, the battery does have a nice nylon strap that can come off fairly easily, as you can see. And it goes back on nice and strong. Uh, and it does come with these uh, post covers, which are typical for most, uh, most lithium iron phosphate batteries. So that's always good to see. Everything looks like everything is in order. Let's take these off and get a initial uh, voltage reading. Okay, straight out of the box. I'm hoping it's going to be between 13.1 and 13.2, but let's see what it is. And it is 13.26. So that is just fine for a battery coming straight out of the packaging. So uh, what we're going to go ahead and do is uh, we'll go ahead and charge this battery all the way up and uh, do a capacity test. Okay, I've been uh, looking over the manual while uh, charging up this battery and uh, the manual is, uh, is pretty good about everything that you need to know uh, about this battery. Uh, first, it gives you the product information. That's like an introduction page. Um, it does say that it's IP65 waterproof. Like I said, the terminal type is an M6, so it uses six millimeter bolts instead of the bigger eight millimeter bolts that you usually find on 100 amp hour batteries. Uh, and then the dimensions are uh, 198 inches tall, 167 inches wide, and 170, <laughs> nope, those are completely wrong, not inches, millimeters. 198 millimeters tall, uh, 167 millimeters across, and 170 millimeters deep. Uh, and if you, in, if you want your inches on that, that is 7.79 inches by 6.57 inches by 6.69 inches. Um, it also talks about the charging voltages and how you should charge it. You can charge it either through solar connected to a solar charge controller or a, uh, a battery charger that's, uh, would, that will charge a battery up to 14.2 to 14.6. Or you can use another inverter to charge the battery, like uh, you know if you have a generator or something like that. Uh, the charging voltages, it says that the, the limit is 14.6, the uh, over voltage disconnect is 15 volts, and the over voltage reconnect is 14.2 volts. Uh, in the discharge category, uh, the low voltage disconnect is 10.8, uh, the low voltage reconnect is 11.6, and the under voltage warning voltage is 12.4. 
if you're measuring it by voltage, it gives you the, the rated capacity of the battery. That is really hard to judge with lithium iron phosphate batteries, but it's kind of nice that they show you uh, a, a basic view of what you can expect. Uh, it talks about long-term storage. Uh, you should keep it between negative 20, or the battery can operate between negative 20 and 60 degrees Celsius. Um, but for storage, it should be stored between 10 degrees Celsius and 35 degrees Celsius. It also talks about how to connect it in parallel and in series. I believe you can connect this battery up to a 4S, 4P configuration if you wanted to buy 16 of these batteries. That would give you a, uh, what, a 200 amp hour, uh, 48 volt battery bank. And then it has a section in the back that talks about how to activate the battery if the BMS uh, shuts off due to, uh, due to protections. So that is nice to see. Um, that's always a big question on, on what happens if your battery gets too, too low, like how, if it gets too far in the discharge and the BMS shuts off, what, you know, what do I do? So it's nice that they put that in the manual. Uh, it shows all the discharge curves of the battery. Uh, if you're really into all that kind of stuff. And then it kind of talks about the applications that you can use with this battery. And I believe the applications are all the same applications that you can do for uh, you know, any other kind of battery, like a lead acid um, or a wet battery, something like that. This 50 amp Venter is uh, all charged up and ready to go. So it, it's, uh, it's sitting right now at 13.7 volts, which is a full battery. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a discharge test. And you know what, I, I don't wanna waste the energy that I put into this battery, so I'm gonna transfer it over to my big SunFun Kit's 275 amp hour battery, because that has enough room uh, for this to completely discharge. So uh, let's go ahead and turn on our 1500 watt inverter. And now we have our uh, 20 amp uh, Hasido charger going, and it's going to be a 20 amp discharge. So it should only take uh, around uh, like two and a half hours, something like that. And uh, we'll see what the capacity shows. So I'll see you in a little bit. <laughs> okay, uh, you know that story earlier where I told you that the, S, uh, that the Sun Fun Kits battery had plenty of capacity for, uh, to, to discharge this 50 amp battery? Well, I was wrong. I looked at the app after I started charging it and it was at 95% state of charge. My bad. So what I did was I switched it over because I still don't want to waste the energy. I want to put it in other items. So what I did is instead I am charging up this uh, GoFort 1000 uh, because it's at 57% so it should have um, some capacity to, to put some stuff into. And I'm also charging this SOK 100 amp hour battery at uh, 5 amps. So if we look at our meter, you can still see right there that we're doing a 20 amp discharge. So this should still take around uh, two to three hours uh, to fully discharge. Uh, I, don't think, I don't think my little switching around stuff is gonna mess with uh, the, the capacity test at all. It's just, uh, I, just, I just had to go a different route than what I thought I was going to. So I'll see you in a little bit. All right, well, we just got home and we heard this. So let's go ahead and turn this off because that means our battery is completely depleted. So let's see what our capacity is. Look at that, 52.8 amp hours. So that is great for a 50 amp hour battery. That is exactly what you want to see. Okay, now that we did the uh, capacity test, which turned out to be very uh, respectable, uh, I went ahead and charged it up like halfway. I put about, uh, about 28 to 30 amp hours in it. And um, what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and do a test of uh, pretty much the maximum amperage test. Uh, it says that this battery can do a, a constant discharge of 50 amps. So we're gonna go ahead and put that to the test right now. Uh, I've got the battery connected to a 2000 watt 12 volt inverter. Uh, that is way overkill for that tiny battery. That battery should only really put out about 640 watts. This thing is what, over triple that? I don't know, almost triple, triple, triple. So 
we're going to go ahead and maybe plug in a heater on low, uh, a 1500 watt heater on low. Uh, we're also probably going to do a, uh, a heat gun on low, uh, you know, kind of see what we can get for that amperage. We're going to try to get around 50 amps and we're just going to try to let it cook there for about 5 or 10 minutes and see if it can do it. So let's go ahead and get it all set up. Okay, you can see that our clamp meter is set to zero right now and it is currently measuring the uh, amperage of the, of the battery. So let's turn on this inverter. There we go, and we can see that the amperage is going up. It's now 0.6 amps. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna put this heat gun on low and we're gonna see what kind of amperage we're getting. Heat gun on low, let's see what we got. Look at that, right off the bat, right at 50 amps. Okay, now that we know that this heat gun on low does exactly 50 amps, let's go ahead and turn the light on on the amp meter. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and, well, let's just run it for uh, 10 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit press start on this and put the heat gun on low. And I will be back in 10 minutes to make sure that this is still running. Okay, it's been over 10 minutes. Let's go ahead and turn this off. And uh, let's look at the battery because it ran it for 10 minutes. So let's stop this. And let's go ahead and pull up a thermal camera on the battery to see what the temperatures are. And you can see that, um, I mean, there is nothing. After 10 minutes running at 50 amps, the hottest part is, I mean, the the connections to the inverter you know they're um, they're not even 90 degrees fahrenheit let's look at the connections to the to the battery uh, see they're right at 89 degrees so these are not these are not concerning at all i mean th there's hot spots on the sides of the battery but again 88 degrees there is nothing there is nothing hot about this battery at all it is it was it was loving that 50 amps with no problem whatsoever okay now that we know uh that this uh vatter or battery can handle a 50 amp continuous discharge for 10 minutes with no problem at all um, i want to see what happens if we push it a little bit harder as in like double it i want i'm going to crank this thing up full blast, it's gonna be over 100 amps. It's probably gonna be 110 amps. And I wanna see what happens with this battery uh, to see if it shuts down. I will, I'll let it run um, you know, for five minutes. We'll see what happens. So, okay, uh, let's go ahead and hit start and turn the, turn the, the heat gun on full blast. All right, yeah, see, we're running at 117 amps right now coming out of that battery. And in all honesty, it should not sustain this for very long. Okay, we've been running 116 amps for over three minutes now. Uh, the thermal camera is showing that the temperature of the uh, positive terminal is right around 109 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, it shut off. Okay, the battery finally shut off. The thermal camera was showing right, you know, it was showing over 120 degrees Fahrenheit at the terminals. There's a little bit of warmth on the outer case of the battery, but not terrible. But the battery did shut off. All right, so it looks like it only took a couple minutes for the battery to actually uh, wake back up from its uh, over amperage event. And honestly, I don't know if it was an over amperage event or if it was an over temperature event inside of the battery. It can run double its rated discharge capacity for uh, almost five minutes before it shuts off. So uh, that's impressive. And through the thermal camera, it wasn't getting terribly hot. I mean, 122 degrees at the terminals, 
that's not anything to really be concerned about. Uh, if you have any questions about this battery, uh, 50 amp, 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery, please leave it in the comments below. Um, I'll have a link to this in my description if you wanna look further into it. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video and you all have a great day. Bye-bye.